Hi, right, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss some of the latest polling to see what Rishi Sunak has managed to achieve ahead of the budget that is quite likely to halt any progress for a while. And also check out the blue wall voting intentions where Labour still seem to hold a lead. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So let's take a look at what YouGov thinks to the overall voting intention and the leadership head to head. Um, nothing wrong with a, a look at a poll of polls for things like this, but YouGov are one of only two pollsters who can back up their methodology with accurate election results. So I, I tend to pay closer attention to them. When Boris Johnson announced his intention to resign, Labour were on 40 points, like 40% 40 of, of voters uh, who would turn out to vote would vote Labour. And the Conservatives were on 29. So Labour had an 11-point lead. At the point Liz Truss took over, Labour had moved on to 44. They'd, they'd extended uh, their, their share of the vote. Uh, but the Conservatives were still on 29. So Labour had pushed ahead. But although there was fluctuation over summer, the Tories had no net change in voting intention, even at the point where people thought Liz Truss was going to be the one that takes over. At the point at which Liz Truss was sent to Room 101 and replaced by Rishi Sunak, Labour were on 56 and the Conservatives on 19. A 37-point lead for Labour and political oblivion for the Tories, if it ever looked like that, in an election. In postponing the budget statement until yesterday, Sunak had given himself three weeks to rescue the poll ratings before Labour had a chance to scrutinise any policies. So how's it gone? Well, the gap has certainly narrowed and considerably. The latest poll has Labour on 48 and the Conservatives on 25. So a 23 point for Labour. As it happens, if you look at other polls, they do tend to give Labour a lead of the same give or take about two points. Um, a big improvement on when Sunak took over, he could argue, uh, but still disaster territory for the Tories if this were still the case for an election. It implies that Truss and Kwarteng have both done permanent damage to the Tories' reputation because that uh, Truss hole has not been filled. It's also a problem for Sunak internally. Johnson supporters, I notice, are pointing at the fact that he enjoyed greater support. They tend to make up their figures. They tend to make out the poll lead for Labour was much smaller than it was. But nonetheless, even if they used the real figures, it could still be said that the Tories were on 29 points when Johnson resigned and Sunak is behind that. But never mind the infighting. Are there any interesting details in the data? Well, yeah, one that, that, that caught my eye. If you look at the breakdown of different groups, you can see that 17% of people who voted Conservative in 2019 would now vote Labour. Now, there are 3%, bizarre, I don't actually know how this works. There are 3% of people who voted Labour in 2019, 2019 who would now vote Conservative. It's a bit of a weird one. But, you know, that, that still shows a net 14% of Tory voters migrating to Labour were there to be an election anytime soon. Now, that would work really well because you bear in mind... If you, if Labour attracts a voter who didn't vote for them in 2019, that's good. If they attract someone who voted Tory in 2019, that's worth two votes. So that 14%, if that was spread across the country, I did it for where I was based at the time in Scunthorpe. And that was a big old swing to the Tories. They won it by a hefty margin. But if you take 14% off their vote and add that 14% onto Labour's, not add 14% to Labour's vote, but the Tory 14% to Labour's vote. They they don't quite overtake, but they come to within a 1,000 votes. And when you consider that Labour will also be hoping to attract the people who just didn't vote at all, it wasn't just that the Tories gained votes at the last election, it's that Labour's vote collapsed. People that just didn't vote for anyone. They, they couldn't bring themselves to vote for Labour for whatever reason, but they also wouldn't vote for the Tories or anyone else. So... Labour will be hoping to win those people back, the people who stayed home last time. And then you, you may hope to get some more um, like uh, strategic voting from Lib Dem and, and Green supporters. But that's also considering that 14% is spread across the country, because that's what this poll is. This poll is just a general view. In reality, that percentage will be larger in areas that, that Labour are targeting, like the red wall seats, for example. 
So that 14% net that would swing from Conservative to Labour is actually pretty huge. Um, there's also in the data there 40% of Lib Dem voters from 2019 who say that they would vote Labour. Um, now, I'm not sure how much of that is because people are thinking strategically now and how much is because the Lib Dems seem to have gone off the boil recently. You know, people have noticed that the, the Liberal Democrats have been falling away of late. And, you know, initially, if you just looked at it in isolation, you'd think, well, maybe this is down to a lack of media attention. Um, but the Green Party have been doing well in the last couple of weeks and they get even less focus in the media. But what really matters is how target voters feel. Not easy to get a sense of that from, from a national poll, but Redfield and Wilton have just published some results specifically for the Blue Wall. Now, I'm going to say that the Blue Wall is even less well-defined than the Red Wall, but we can talk about it as being traditional Tory seats that could be targets for either the Liberal Democrats or Labour. It doesn't mean every Conservative seat. So this poll shows that in 2019, Labour had 21% of the votes in these seats and the Conservatives 50%, but their latest poll indicates Labour on 38% and the Conservatives on 32%. Now, it does have to be said, for some bizarre reason, they include don't knows in there. When they filtered those out, it's narrower, but Labour do still have a lead. Now, that lead has come down since Sunak took over, certainly, and you could imagine a direction of travel where he tries to overtake them. But at the moment, Labour still have a lead. And bear in mind, some of these seats are not actually going to be targeted by Labour. In fact, relatively few of them are, either now or in the future. The Conservatives will be actively campaigning in all of these seats right now. But Labour will only be doing so in the seats where they smell an upset. You know, Steve Baker's seat, for example. You know, waste of resources to do otherwise. So having any lead at all is ominous for the Conservatives. Truth be told, the Conservatives could get a lead back. And it could still mean Labour winning a raft of these seats if they can concentrate those votes into the seats that matter, which is what their plan will be. What's potentially more worrying is that the Lib Dems have fallen back from 27% in 2019 to 23% now. Um, I mean, they did really well last year in winning numerous by-elections in safe Tory seats. North Shropshire was the biggest scalp, technically, because that was by far and away the safe. It was one of the safest seats the Tories had. But surely the best win was Cheshire and Amersham. You know, when they took, they took that before the scandals, which damaged, you know, Boris Johnson's reputation. They took it before that, when Boris Johnson personally was still popular. That by-election was won purely on policies. You know, we could do with the Lib Dems getting back on the front foot, really. Not just for themselves. I mean, it helps Labour as well. We'll have to see what they can do in terms of lines of attack on the budget which I can't imagine moderate Conservatives voters will all be, be all that happy about, but we will see. Uh, the polls next week should be interesting. Uh, interestingly, they also polled on tactical voting and they found that 65% of 2019 Lib Dem voters in the blue wall would vote tactically and so would 40% of Conservative voters. Now, I thought that was an interesting one because given that we're talking about the blue wall here, Given that there are zero seats in the blue wall for a Conservative voter to vote tactically in if they want to help the Conservative Party, you have to think that's 40% of Conservative voters who voted Conservative last time, that is, but would vote for whichever party is best placed to correct their earlier error next time. Finally, and back to you, Gov, for the head-to-head. -head. Now, I'm a little more hesitant on this one because two things. First of all, there's no real way of proving that a head-to-head -head polling is is accurate with a real election. Uh, also, there has been significant variation amongst different pollsters. But YouGov have Starmer extending his lead over Sunak on who would make the best Prime Minister, from a four-point lead last week to a seven-point lead now. Although what matters is the trend. You know, although the actual numbers can be different for different pollsters, if over the next week or so they show uh, Starmer pulling ahead of Sunak, you know, um, gaining favourability and Sunak losing it, then the general trend will be that way. It doesn't matter what the figure is now. The election's not now. And, you know, they, they don't all produce these polls on a frequent basis either. It's all right saying, oh, we'll wait till next week. They don't always produce a poll each week. Sometimes it's just each month, sometimes every couple of months. But the snapshot across both of these polling companies right now is that Labour still have a large lead over the Conservatives. Labour still lead in the blue wall where even being a close second would be a good news at the election, if they can focus that support, that is. And Starmer is seen as a better leader than Rishi Sunak.
on YouGov at least, Labour are also still seen as better at handling the economy. So the tri-factor really. You know, Sunak has closed the gap everywhere, apart from on the head-to-head. -head. But now we have the budget statement. So it'll be interesting to see who wins that one. And the thing about a budget is that the opposition have three chances to attack it. The first is when it's announced. So that's happened now. So the political game is afoot right now and over the next few days. Um, Labour need to be going at it hard to get their message out. Polling in the next couple of weeks should be very interesting to see who has won that battle. The second time is when the budget is implemented. Because it's not implemented yet, it's just announced. It gets implemented next April. So then people can see the impact on their household budgets directly, not just read about it in the news. And then the third time is when the benefits that the government promised don't materialise. Oh yeah, you're going to suffer, but it'll all be worthwhile. And then you get to the point where it's supposed to be all worthwhile. You go, it doesn't seem to be all worthwhile, does it? But in the here and now, the only shield Sunak can use against his detractors in the Tory party is poll rating. He doesn't have that. Unless and until he can get it, he will continue to be vulnerable to rebellion. It's just the way of politics. A leader will always be under pressure when the polls are not where the party wants them to be. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.